Welcome to the Nikola 11X12 technology. Today we're looking at the new AMD FX8320 Vichera CPU. We've been waiting so long now for these new FX processors and now they finally launched. These CPUs still use the AM3 Plus socket. Alright, but here's the box. Again, we're looking at an AMD FX 8 core processor, a black edition CPU, so you can overclock it. On top, you see it says FX8320 here, and there also are some specifications. It looks like AMD decided to use the same box just like the last generation of FX CPUs, because it says world's first 8 core desktop processor. This one isn't anymore, but that doesn't matter. On this side, AMD tells you how good this processor does, and here's the CPU itself inside the box. On the back of the box, as always, is a description in different languages. Now, on the other side, AMD basically wants you to combine this CPU with the AMD Radeon HD graphics cards and an AMD 9 series chipset. The box itself is made out of metal and it looks and feels great if that matters. Trust me, it looks even better in real life than it does through the camera. I can only say, good job AMD on the amazing metal box. It's outstanding and I've never seen such a nice CPU box before. But now, let's open a box up and see what's inside. Alright, here's the manual and warranty. Here's the stock cooler that comes with the CPU, and it looks very nice. I really like that AMD includes these good coolers and there are even heat pipes. Thermal paste comes replied already, and the fan uses a 4-pin fan connector. Here's the CPU with the sticker and the plastic protection. I'll take out the CPU so we can take a closer look at it. And there it is, it looks very nice and it already feels more powerful, and like I've said before, the M3 Plus socket is still used, as well as the same chipsets. That's why I installed this processor in the ASRock 990FX Extreme 3 motherboard, and as for cooling, I decided to go with the stock cooler. But now, let's get to the specifications. The AMD FX8320 is an 8-core Vichera CPU that has a base clock of 3.5GHz and a turbo clock of 4.0GHz. It has a TDP of 125 watts. that's because the same old 32 nanometer architecture is still used. 8 megabytes of level 2, as well as 8 megabytes of level 3 cache is offered and this CPU also supports dual channel DDR3 1866 memory natively. In CPU-C, the processor gets detected without any problems. The voltage is very low, the latest instructions are used and to save energy, the CPU will clock itself down to a lower clock speed on idle instead of constantly running at 3.5 GHz. This FX processor is a black edition one. This means it has an unlocked multiplier and therefore you can overclock the CPU very easily. As for the memory, I got 8GB of DDR3 2000MHz RAM installed, but unfortunately I couldn't get it to run at a rated frequency without overclocking the platform. That's why I'm running the kit at 1866MHz, but 2133MHz shouldn't be a problem, just a gap between so 2000MHz isn't support. But now let's move on to the benchmarks.
So the AMD FX 8320 CPU delivers great CPU performance for the price. It can definitely keep up with Intel's Core i5 processors, but still in terms of raw CPU performance, this FX CPU still can reach the Core i7-3770K. When it comes to rendering, it falls back behind the Core i5-3570K, but overall the rendering performance can be considered as pretty good. When it comes to gaming, well, sometimes this FX processor can fall back a bit, but I'm only talking of 3 to 5 FPS at max. In most cases, it keeps up with the competition and offers almost the same performance, but only in games. The temperatures tend to be more on the higher side, but for the stock cooler, 63 degrees Celsius real isn't much for an 8 core. The AMD FX Vichera CPUs definitely run a lot cooler than Intel's Ivy Bridge CPUs. And that's why you have a lot of headroom for overclocking. This processor is fully unlocked and overclocking is made really easy and fun on this particular chip. The AMD FX 8320 also makes a very stable impression to me and that's good. But still, this CPU also has a dark side and that would be the power consumption. We have to compare this FX 8320 with the i5 3570K performance wise. And on idle, this FX CPU consumes roughly 27% more power. When the CPU is on full load, that would be 43% more power. And trust me, that's really a lot. But still, if you don't care that much about the power consumption and are an AMD fan, well, for the price you get great performance and AMD definitely improved over the previous generation FX processors. So in the end, I'd say this CPU is meant for the AMD enthusiasts that want great performance for the price. You can overclock the CPU very easily and what I really like is that you can still use your AIM3 Plus motherboard even with the same 990FX chipset as it still remains the flagship chipset model from AMD. The power consumption is a lot higher when comparing this against Intel's processors, but that's something you have to accept when using the CPU. Pros are great price performance ratio, the CPU is very stable, has some good temperatures, supports high frequency memory and has an unlocked multiplier and therefore it makes overclocking very easy. It's also good that the AM3 Plus socket and the 990FX chipset is still used. So if you have a motherboard from the last generation, you could just install the CPU and you're good to go without any limits. Of course you shouldn't forget to update the BIOS. For the cons I can only say one thing. The power consumption is too high, but other than that it's a great CPU especially for its price. I give this processor an 8 out of 10 and would definitely recommend it for the price and if you don't care so much about the power consumption. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.